right. Hello. Hello, everyone. We welcome to your vinyasa practice, <laughs> by the way. Um, if you want to grab any props to have in your practice, they're always welcome. The only thing that I'm going to probably utilize today will be a couple of blocks, and it, they don't have to be yoga blocks if you don't have them at home. It could be two hardback books of similar size. You could use a stool um, or like a nice fluffy couch cushion pillow, anything that you can use to make your arm just a little bit longer. So like if you were to have a little bit less to, to reach to reach the floor, um, which might come in handy for things like trikonasana and um, low lunges in your practice. So with that said, when you're ready, we'll start out on our backs, just stretching out, stretching out through the legs, stretching out through the arms, shrugging the shoulders down the back, a slight tilt of the chin into the chest. Invitation to close your eyes if that feels comfortable and just start to simply become aware of your breath. If you're able to breathe in through the nose and maybe out through the nose or out through the mouth. We'll just do that a few times, breathing into the body consciously. Two more breaths here. And we'll start to add on a little bit of movement. So we'll first take our right knee and hug it into the chest. You can interlace your fingers around the shin if that's possible or the back of the thigh if that feels better on the shoulders. I want you to think about keeping your shoulders, in particular the back of your shoulder blades on the mat, your head relaxed on the mat, and then see if you can just give the, the left leg a little bit of a float so the heel bone comes slightly off of the mat. I'm pressing through my left heel bone to extend and engage the muscles of my left thigh while I'm simultaneously pulling my right thigh in towards my rib cage. And we're just going to switch sides a few times. So pulling the left knee in, extending the right leg while keeping the shoulder blades and the back of the head relaxed on the mat. Right heel bone hovers and press through that right heel bone. If you can, lengthen out through the right leg. Feel the thigh muscles engage as you squeeze the left leg in. And then we'll switch sides a little bit more fluid fluidly. So right Knee hugs in, left leg extends. Left knee hugs in, right leg extends. And then just continue. So we're not moving fast. We're moving slow enough to notice, to breathe into each side, to feel the extension of the opposite leg and the tension of the muscle fiber holding that leg off of the ground. And then the next time you hug that right knee in, curl your chin into your chest, lift the back of your head, lift the shoulders away. Okay, so we're adding on here. And as we're lifting the shoulders and lifting the head, curling the chin into the chest, can you reach the right hand to the outer right foot? And then see if you can relax the shoulders and the head back to the mat. So you're coming into half happy baby. You can still reach through that left heel bone, let the left leg hover. And then we'll release and we'll change sides. So first you're going to hug your left knee in as you extend your right leg long. And then curl the chin in, lift the shoulders, lift the back of the head, give yourself a little squeeze here. And then reaching with the left hand to the outer left foot, catch a hold of the foot and then relax the back of the head and the shoulder blades back to the mat. Half happy baby on the second side. 
Pause here, breathe in, extend through that right heel bone. We'll switch sides one more time to each side. So first hugging that right knee into the chest, curl the chin in, lift the shoulders, back of the head. Reach for the outer right foot, half happy baby on the right side. Press long through that left heel. Switch sides. Hug left knee in, curl chin in, lift the shoulders. Reach for the outer left foot, half happy baby. Big breath in. Big breath out. Let's release that. Stretch both legs out long. Reach both arms overhead. And then as you exhale, hug both knees into the chest. Give yourself a little bit of a rock side to side. And then you can rock forward until you're coming up towards a seat. And we'll come forward into tabletop from there. And so again, you might want to have your block or your stool or your hardback book handy at the top of your mat for when we come to our standing shapes. Before we come to standing shapes, we're gonna articulate the spine a little bit more in Chakra Vakasana, which means dynamic wheel. So your inhale, you pull the heart forward, you'll lift the tailbone, that's your little back bend. And your exhale, you round out, press the floor away, hips move back towards the heels for child's pose. Bend the elbows, soften the forehead. Inhale, come forward for that back bend. Exhale, press the floor away, round the upper back, pull the hips back towards the heels, child's pose. Relax the head, relax the elbows towards the mat. Let's try that three more times. And as you inhale and you come forward, you can move the hips down and forward, letting the knees be soft on the mat into what's kind of like a, a lazy upward facing dog. If that feels okay on the back, you can always stick with cow, which is your tabletop back bend if that lazy upward dog is too much. Round out, press back, child's pose. Twice more, inhale for your back bend, what's gonna work for you, pay attention to your body and its signals. Exhale, press back, pull back, round out. Inhale, come forward, find your back bend. Exhale, pull back, child's pose. And let's pause in child's pose and take an extra breath cycle here. All right, we're gonna come forward to a tabletop, curling the toes under, spread your fingers. Take a look at your hand. Is your hand flat? Can you press down through the thumb and the index finger knuckle mound so the hand is completely in contact with the mat? And then give the mat a little grip with your fingertips so that your hands are active. Then curling the toes under, pressing the hips up and back, find that down dog. You can start to pedal out the feet, bend the knees right and left. Now in this down dog, I'd like to invite you to take a little bit different orientation. So you're bending your right knee, your left heel bone moves towards straight. Okay, and then your right heel bone kicks in and your toes turn out. And that leg, that right leg moves towards straight. So you're turning your right hip bone out to the right side of your mat. A little bit different orientation. Then lift that right heel bone, that hips turns to neutral, and then we're gonna turn that left heel bone in, left toes out, move that left leg towards straight, and then rebend that left knee, turn the hip forward, and then just try to switch sides. So right heel down and in, right toes out, switch sides, left heel down and in, left toes out. So I'm just turning the direction of my feet, basically. And thereby I'm changing the direction of my hips. And the stretch sensation might move into a different position in your legs than you're used to. One more time, each side. Relax your head in your down dog to the best of your ability. And then let's neutralize our down dog. So both hip points point, pointing forward, both legs 
towards straight, both heel bones heavy. Let's inhale and shift forward to high plank and just pause for a moment in your high plank, lengthen out, deep breath in, deep breath out. Set your knees to the mat and then let's come all the way to the belly. Now, as you're coming to your belly, curl your chin into your chest, let your forehead rest on the mat. Walk your wrist back so they stack underneath your elbows. Keep your elbows in close. Press down through the tops of your feet. Inhale, lift the heart, low cobra. And then exhale, tuck your chin first. Let your forehead rest on the mat. We're going to do that about five more times. So keep your shoulders shrugging down your back. Keep your elbows squeezing close as you inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, tuck the chin first. Let your forehead come all the way down to the mat. Four more times. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower. Can you completely release all tension at the bottom and then reset and start again twice more? Inhaling to lift, exhaling to lower. One last time. Good. So curl the toes under at the bottom of this exhale. Engage the thigh bones so your knees are lifting. Press down through the ball mounds of the feet and the palms of the hand up to either high plank or tabletop. Hips move up and back. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Start to walk the feet forward. You're going to come to a forward fold at the top of your mat. And if you have your props there, like your blocks or your stool, you can go ahead and take them underneath your hands. So you bring up the floor to meet you where you're at today. Soft bend in those knees, hinging forward from the waist, belly relaxing on top of thighs, head is heavy. Let's find an inhale and halfway lift here. So lengthen out through the spine, feel your core engage, your navel's hugging back into the back body. Exhale, release, soften through the elbows and the knees. Press down through your feet, start to come up to standing. Head coming up last. Arms circle out to the sides and reach up and overhead as you breathe in here. And then exhale, reversing that arms wide, hinging forward from the hips, knee soft, forward fold. Let's do that twice more. Half Surya Namaskar A. So we inhale, find that halfway lift, engage the belly. Exhale, forward fold. Press down into the feet, little bend in the knees as you uncurl the spine. Arms stretch out and reach up as you breathe in. As you're breathing out, exhaling, arms wide, hinging forward, soft knees. One more time. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, refold. Little bend in those knees, start to uncurl the spine. Arms stretch out and reach up, breathe in. Exhale, refold. We'll add on to our flow here. So we'll inhale and find that halfway lift and we'll step the right foot back, right knee to the mat. You can pop up onto your fingertips here or bring your hands to your prop and wiggle that left foot forward. So you have a little bit more of length between the front foot and the back foot. You're just creating more space. And then go ahead a little bit wobble side to side so you can start to feel that sensation across the front of the right thigh and hip flexor. Now curling those back toes under, lift the back knee so you're straightening out through that right leg. Inhale here and start to wobble a little bit forward backward. If we're using a prop, we're going to move that prop out of the way, place the hands flat on the mat, and step back into downward facing dog. 
Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, reach the right leg up and back. Exhale, step the right foot forward and between the hands, left knee to the mat. You can bring that prop back underneath the hands to make your arms longer. Start to wobble a little bit side to side. Start to wiggle that right foot forward a little bit more. Create a nice long stride. And now curling those back toes under, lifting the back knee, straighten out through that back leg and start to shift the weight forward backward. Good, and then we're gonna step that back foot forward to the top of the mat. So you're coming into your forward fold. And from here, we'll add on. So we'll bend our knees, we'll sink our hips. Belly starts out resting on the thighs. And then as we lift our chest and we add our arms stretching forward, we find a chair pose. So the belly starts to lift away from the thighs and the low back starts to lengthen out because we're using our core here. Move the weight back into the heel bones. So you might feel that weight shift back, deep breath in. And then stand up, press through the feet, reach tall. Breathe out. We're gonna lead with the second side. So the left leg's gonna lead this vinyasa and we're gonna add on to our flow. We'll inhale, reach the arms up. We'll exhale, we'll forward fold. Inhale, find that halfway lift. And then exhale, step your left foot back. Now this time keep your left leg straight and the left knee lifted and spin that left foot flat so the heel bone comes to the ground and you rise up to warrior two. And then just go ahead and here and settle into warrior two. Nice deep bend in that right knee. Pause and breathe. We'll press the right leg straight. We're going to prepare for trikonasana in a little bit different way. So listen as we set this up. That left hip's going to kind of turn forward. The left shoulder is going to kind of turn forward. Oftentimes in trikonasana, we think about being in between two planes of glass, so our shoulders are stacked. But I want you to think about actually turning the left hip and shoulder forward a little bit. So right hand reaches down for a block or the shin bone. And then the left hand, just take it to the left hip and feel that hip and shoulder kind of turn forward. Okay, so you can keep the hand on the hip or you can come with me. I'm gonna extend my left arm overhead. So my biceps alongside my ear and I'm kind of rainbowing the upper body, which is my left side, over my lower body, which is my right side. You can look down at that right foot, deep breath in here. Deep breath out. Now I'm still engaging my back foot, my left foot's pressing down, pressing the floor away, I'm active. And then we're gonna re-bend that right knee, both hands come to the top of the mat, and we'll step into high plank from here. Step into high plank and pause, breathe in, lengthen out. And then exhale, shift forward onto the toes. Maybe it's chaturanga, you can bend at the elbows. Inhale for maybe upward facing dog or another round of low cobra. And then exhaling up and back to downward facing dog. Pause in your downward facing dog, three breath cycles. Relax your head. One more breath here. Second side, we'll inhale left leg, sweep it up and back. Exhale left foot steps forward in between the hands. Keep that right leg nice and long and active. And then spin your right heel bone flat. Rise up first to warrior two. Set up in warrior two first. So check out the legs. Check out the feet. Are the toes relaxed? Are the toes spreading wide? Soften in here, deep breath in. Deep breath out. 
press that left leg to straight, we're setting up for that varied trikonasana where we're turning the right shoulder and right hip kind of forward or, or like at a diagonal. So start off with the right hand at the right hip, reach forward with the left hand, bring it down to the shin bone or maybe that prop that you're using if you're using one. And then the right arm can stay at the hip or you can reach it up and overhead. So the right bicep sweeps forward alongside the ear. So we're kind of rounding forward through the right side. And I'm looking down at my left foot. I can notice and appreciate how relaxed my toes are. I can see space in between my toes. Notice what's going on in your feet. And then still become aware of what's happening in your back right foot. It's active, it's pressing the floor away. Take one more breath here. And then we'll rebend into that left knee. Both hands come forward, right heel bone lifts. You're stepping back into high plank here. Pause in your high plank, breathe in. And then breathe out. Choose if you're gonna move through vinyasa and what that will look like for you might look different from me. It could just be simply tabletop with cat cow. You could rest in child's pose. When you're ready, we'll meet back up in downward facing dog. Last time here. I'll take three breaths. Okay, so we're setting up for half pigeon. The right leg will sweep up and back if you like, and then the right knee will come forward towards that right wrist. And then as I'm setting this up, so many different options, and those of you who practice with me regularly know I like that pigeon option where both knees are bent in 90 degree angle shapes. So all of my weight in this option is on my right hip, okay? And there's not any weight on my right knee. And then, so my back knee is bent just as much, and I can bring my hands forward over that front shin and just sit up here for a few moments, okay? Don't worry about forward folding into your pigeon just yet. Option number two, if you know that your right knee can handle a little bit of pressure, you can turn that left hip bone to point forward and down towards the mat, and the left leg lengthens out. Same thing here though, in your pigeon, it's gonna stay lifted and active. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a rock side to side. My hands are forward of my right shin. And I'm just kind of shifting my weight right to left. Relaxing my shoulders and finding my breath. So whatever shape you're making in your body, be sure you're breathing and just add a little bit of soft movement side to side. Two more breaths. And so we're gonna make our way out of this. You can either move back to tabletop or another round of down dog, even though I said that your last round of down dog was your last one. Maybe I lied. <laughs> so take a few breaths in neutral, whether you're moving through cat cow, you're in your child's pose or you're in your down dog. If you're in down dog, it might feel nice to reach your left leg up and back and then send that left knee forward behind the left wrist. You can move all of the weight to that left hip and bend the back knee so both knees are bent and hands forward of the left shin. And then staying upright, right, there's a little bit of activation in the muscles. We're not just relaxing over that leg and softening the muscle tissue. Option number two would be to straighten out through that right leg, turn the right hip point down. As long as that feels okay in that left knee, you can stick with this. Hands forward of the left shin, and then you can rock a little bit of weight side to side. So our pigeon is active today. What do I mean by that? I'm engaging some of my muscle. So I'm actively pressing down with my outer left ankle my left shin and pressing the floor away just like I would in a standing shape, like how we were practicing Trikonasana today, activating that back leg. So there's actually merit to this increasing range of motion when you are engaging muscle fibers in a stretched position, good for agility and increasing range of motion. 
you know, we can increase flexibility in passive range of motion, what we do on Thursdays in our restorative practices. But I think for the integrity of muscles, we need both passive stretch and active stretch. Take a couple more breaths here. Do whatever you want to do to come out of this. We're going to meet up on our back, setting up for bridge pose. So I'm just simply going to slide my weight onto my left hip and bring my right foot forward and then roll down onto my back. Knees bent and feet planted. So bridge pose, stretch your arms down towards your feet. My palms are facing the floor and it's like my fingertips want to tickle the backs of my heels. My shoulders are relaxed away from my ears. Press down into the feet, lift the hips up. Now we're gonna reach the arms up and overhead. So dynamic bridge, three rounds. And dynamic movement just means moving in and out of a shape with the breath, just like vinyasa. We'll exhale, we'll come back to our starting position. Arms relax, hips down. Twice more like that. Pressing into the feet, relax the toes. Lift the hips, arms stretch overhead. Exhale, release, arms and spine back to the mat. One more time, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, release. Good, now I'm gonna give you an option to take a restorative bridge pose or one more active bridge. Urdhva Dhanurasana, if it is in your practice, Arms overhead, palms flat, fingertips point towards the shoulders, elbows point up towards the ceiling. Only if that is in your practice and you can do that safely and you know you have that range of motion and the strength in the shoulders to press your way up. Otherwise, active bridge, pressing into the feet. Option to take the hands, interlace them underneath the pelvis. Arms move towards straight. You're pressing down through the pinky edges of the palms. Or that restorative bridge works really well if you have blocks or a stack of books. You can slide right underneath the sacrum, the back of the pelvis, just below the low back. Whatever shape you're making with your body, whether it's active or passive, whether it's Urdhva Dhanurasana, take one more breath in, one more breath out. And then mindfully, slowly, with care, with kindness, start to reverse out of the shape. If you have a prop underneath your sacrum, move it out of the way. Let your spine come back to the mat completely. Let's hug the knees into the chest. Draw some circles with the knees. You can just take your hands, cup them around the knee joint, and then start to move the knees in a circular pattern. And then change directions with your circle, opposite way. I'll take a brief twist. Knees are gonna move off to the left. Right hip is gonna stack on top. Right arm stretches off to the right side. Left hand resting on the outer right thigh. Opening the chest towards the ceiling. Your choice if you want to take the gaze over the right shoulder. That's a little bit much for my neck. So always choosing what works best in your body and listening and paying attention to the signals that your body sends you. Let's take three breaths here. And maybe the eyes close. And we're gonna change sides, hugging the knees in and then turning them off to point towards your right, left hip stacking on top, left arm reaching off to the left, right hand gently resting on the outer left thigh. Keeping the chest open towards the ceiling and choose the gaze that is appropriate for your neck. Can you breathe deeply, easily? Can you swallow? Three breath cycles here. I'll 
and start to unwind. We'll come back through neutral. Any last movement that you need or any support you would like to take your final Shavasana, we just take one minute here to integrate. And of course, longer if you have the time. I'll start to shrug your shoulders down your back. I'm setting us a timer. One minute, slightly tilt the chin in. Deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale. That relax the jaw, the back teeth part. Tongue widens at the base of the mouth. Eyes sink heavy into their sockets. Let it go, let it rest. Shavasana. If you can stay longer, please do so. If you need to move about your day, begin to awaken through the body. You can reach your arms over the head, stretching long from fingertips down to the toes. Exhale, bending the knees, rolling off to a side. Invitation to keep the eyes closed as you start to rise up to a final, very brief, comfortable seat to close out our practice here. Maybe you slide a prop underneath the tailbone to allow the spine to grow tall with ease. I invite you to stack your hands flat against your heart, one on top of the other, and bow the chin into the chest, acknowledging that I am alive, I am here, I am trying, and that is enough. You can feel your heart beating into your hands. With reverence and gratitude for the practice, May you always remember that you'll be okay. Find a white light that guides you and keeps you safe and have hope, help, and happiness along the way. Namaste, yogis. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you showing up. These classes would not exist without you, so truly thank you. Uh, one really quick announcement, I'm leading a yoga teacher training, a foundational yoga teacher training beginning in uh, January, January 6th of 2023. Details for that will be coming out in my newsletter, which you can sign up for if you haven't done so already at my website, which is tessatovar.com, T-E-S-S-A-T-O-V as in Victor, A-R.com. So. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks, y'all.